Yeah, this is Navajo Tenefazad, Lesson 1, Letters and Pronunciation. I have been asked to continue these lessons, so I will revise my first lesson and then continue from here. All right, let's get started. I want us to start off with uh, remembering what vowels are and what consonants are. So vowels are in English A-E-I-O-U and uh, the consonants are everything that are not those vowels. Now here we have letters, of course, the letters in English, A-E-I-O-U. And here I've written out their um, pronunciation. So this is what I'll use. This is a system that linguists tend to use um, to represent sounds. So we've got A-E-I-O-U. The reason that I'll use this system sometimes is because English doesn't have a one-to-one uh, -one sound representation with their letters. For example, this letter here is, is pronounced A, and of course it can be pronounced that way in a word like Kate, but in a word like cat, which uses the same letter, A ah, is the sound that's being represented. Um, but of course that's a different sound to A. And ah is another sound that can be represented by this letter. So there's actually three different uh, ways, or sorry, there are three different sounds that this letter can represent. Whereas in the IPA, in this system, we can just use one combination or just one, one uh, letter to represent those. And these are always going to be in slashes of some sort. So the consonants are going to be um, everything that are not vowels, of course, we're going to look at a certain consonant S. So this is the ortho uh, in orthography, this is going to be the S in English. Now, is this always pronounced as S? We can look at this word here, vision. This gives us our first hint that it's not always pronounced as S. We don't say vision or vision. I mean, in some languages, probably, but in English, we don't. We say vision. That's a different sound. And here we've got bless. This is what we would uh, think that this letter represents the sound bless. Here we've got brands. Now it seems like this could be the same sound um, that we would think that it represents, but in this certain um, sentence, you can see the brands are too much. When we look at these two words together, brands are, we can see, or actually we can hear, that this final S actually is pronounced as a Z sound. Brands are too much. And actually it depends on the consonant that comes before it. So this is voiced D, D. So this voice actually um, spreads to this, this sound. So it makes it also voiced. Brands, brands are too much. Now uh, you can compare with the word cats. You can say the cats are too much. In this case, cats are. In this, um, in that example, it is uh, the voiceless s because the consonant that comes before it is a t, which is t, and it's voiceless. That gets way too much into linguistics, but right now this is something to keep in mind as we start to learn Navajo. Okay, we can start with the consonants that I consider to be a part of the easy set because they exist in English as well. So I'll go down the list and then we will talk about each one, well, the, the more complicated ones afterward. B, ch, d, g, h, j, k, l, m, n, s, t, w, y, z, z, qu, sh, ts, j. All right. So I put some uh, examples here. For example, uh, z exists in a word like pads in English. It's the final sound in pads. Uh, and in Navajo, it can happen at the beginning of a word, the initial part. So we've got uh, z, which means elk, for example. Here we've got qu, which is the same sound as in queen. Uh, we just spell it with a kw in Navajo. Remember, all of the letters that you see on the left would be in the Navajo writing system. So qua. Here, a, a word with this sound is qua, -e, which means here. Now we've got sh, as in shark, and in Navajo, sh, 
is the same sound. And here we've got t as in cats. Again, this is in the final part of cats. Um, and in Navajo, we can start up with the we can start a word with the sound as in tsin. And here we've got zh as in beige and vision. In Navajo, we can start it with a word sometimes as in j. Um, these tend to be more uh, slang words, I feel like. But this is a word which actually refers to the king card in a deck of cards. So if you play poker or Navajo tent, then you'll probably see the word or you'll hear the word j used in this context. All right, so we've got the consonants, which I consider to be hard. Now, the reason why is because they either don't exist in English or they are just hard to pinpoint when you're speaking the language. So I will pronounce the sounds on the left. This is how we write them in Navajo. And then I will talk about their pronunciation afterward. So, dl, r, wh, sh, sh. Okay, so here we've got d, l, to make dl. Okay, so it doesn't occur in the back of the mouth, so we're not saying gl. It occurs at the front, which means that we have to pronounce it as dl. Now here we've got r, which is g plus h to make r. Now you want to raise your back tongue, uh, make sure it's voiced, which means you'll feel vibration in your vocal cords or in your throat. You can actually touch your throat and then you can try to pronounce the sound r. If there's vibration, then you're doing good. And that means it's voiced. So you also want to continue the airflow. So there'll be some friction, um, but airflow is important. Now, the next sound is hu, which is a combination of h, wh, wh. So you can just try to emphasize the sound in the word while. While. Of course, a certain TV show makes fun of this sound when you emphasize it, but in Navajo, it's important to know how to do. So hu, hu. So now we've got which has your tongue being in the same place as l. Um, the only difference is this sound is unvoiced. So again, there's no vibration in your uh, vocal cord. So in this case, you shouldn't feel it in the same way as l. So you can compare the two. If you touch your neck, um, you can actually compare the voiced and voiceless features for each sound. Um, there's only air going through, and you want to push the tip of the tongue to the top of your mouth. So, of course, that's how you pronounce l as well. The only, the big difference is that it's unvoiced. So, again, l. Now we've got this one, which is a, which is a combination. So we've got which is a combination of make kh. now it's not cool so we're not saying kh, kh. we're not doing that it's actually in the front of the mouth remember kh, kh. not kh. <laughs> for example now we are going to look at a couple symbols uh, one of them is a glottal stop and actually this one is an emphasizer um, emphasizing sound so it's a kh kind of thing so with a glottal stop, you want to make sure that you stop the sound. When it comes after a consonant like these, you want to stop the consonant. For example, if we didn't have a glottal stop here, this would be pronounced as ch, ch. But when you have the glottal stop, it'll be ch, ch. You have to stop that sound. Same as here, if you didn't have it, it would be k. But with the glottal stop, you need to say and here, t, t, t. this is um, a different direction than the others, but that's just, it, it doesn't matter. Um, that was just a matter of, I don't know, the formatting issues that go along with this. So I'll pronounce each one and then I'll continue. All right, so these are the consonants with glottal stops. And we've got this X, 
Um, it's, again, the pronunciation for this is a h, h. It happens in the back of your throat, or actually it can also be almost like an unvoiced Y in some cases. So, for example, we have tian, tian. <laughs> sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that um, very slow, but tian, tian. The unvoiced Y, for example, you can pronounce Y as y, y, and then unvoiced, remember, no vibration in your neck, in your throat, you'll say y, y. It's kind of like a cat hissing. So you've got tian, tian. Here as well, we have tian, go, or you can say faster, tian, go, Sometimes people pronounce um, this word without the G sound, so it'll just be tian, go, and then we've got chong, chong. So again, um, this one actually occurs at the back of the throat, probably because of the O. So chong, chong desk uh, means it's so cold, right? And then we've got skin, skin. Again, this one happens kind of like this unvoiced Y. So there's a couple different ways to pronounce it, and it depends on the vowel that follows it, it seems. Again, All right, so I want to also continue to the vowel pronunciations. Now, we've got A, as in English, stall. All right, so on the left side, we'll have the Navajo writing, and then on the right side, I'll give you in quotations the, an English word that has this sound. E, step. E, stick. E, eel. O, stow. Ui, gooey. So again, the IPA will be a, e, 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 o, ui. Like this. Now be careful. The O in Navajo is not the same as the O in English. So in English, O consists of two sounds. O and U is kind of like a movement from O to U. So O, O, that's the diphthong. So here are some examples. Flow, bingo, oval. So again, flow, bingo, oval. They all consist of two sounds kind of smashed together. Now in Navajo, it only consists of one sound, the beginning sound of the diphthong in English. So Navajo pronunciation is o, o. So here we've got sido, a good, yo. All right, so keep in mind that you don't want to use the English pronunciation when you're speaking Navajo. So do not say sido or a goad or yo. So that would mean nothing. So you want to make sure you say sido, a good, yo. Now you want to pr practice the o sound. We've got sido, which means hot, to touch, a good, which means knee, yo, which means necklace. Again, everything in green is English, everything in blue is in Navajo. All right, so we've got diacritics, which are markings that further adjust sounds in Navajo. We've got high tone, low tone, rising, falling. Now, a low tone is going to be probably the most natural monotone voice that you can think of for yourself. And if you can even think of a classical robot voice, that will be your low tone, however you imitate that robot voice. The high tone will be more excitable, I suppose, your more excited tone of voice. Now I can pronounce each one for you. A, 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 a. All right. So a good way to also practice is to designate a sound with high and another sound with low. So then you can say low, high, low, or high, low, high, high, low, low, for example. This will help when we look at words to help separate the tone from the word, and then you can bring them together afterwards. 
So we've got also a nasal marking, which means you need to pronounce the sound through your nose. So here we've got uh. If we didn't have the nasal marking, it would be ah. Uh. But with the nasal, it will go through your nose, uh, like that. We've also got the glottal stop, which means you must stop the sound. So here, again, without the glottal stop, would be ah. Uh. With the glottal stop, ah. Uh. Ah, uh, so you stop the sound right there. Ah, uh, don't let it continue. So again, ah, 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 ah. Now you can actually apply the nasal to any of these um, four up here. So we can say ah, uh, for example, and you can even apply glottal stop to that ah uh, as ah uh, ah. Uh. So. That adds to the complexity of Navajo pronunciation. It's good to try to combine all of these diacritics to practice. Now, we are going to actually practice. So here we go. We've got a z, a z, Notice that it's going through the um, nose here. And this one has all of them together. It has two high tones, it has two nasals, and it's got the glottal stop. So this is a good word to practice. Remember, you're not saying kli, or sorry, you're not saying kli, kli. That um, has no nasal, it has no high tone, and it has no glottal. So you want to have all of those. Here we've got kon and Con, 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 b, 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 b. All right, so we're going to look at vowel pronunciations in another way. So we've got the diacritics on the outside of the vowels here. So let's pronounce the vowels first, and then we'll talk about the diacritics again. Ah, uh, ah, uh, eh, 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 e, o, o. All right, notice there's no high tone, there's no nasal, there's no glottalization. So we are going to actually apply them. Here we have eh, we can pronounce it with a high tone, eh. We have e with a high tone, e with nasals, e. We have o. We can put high tone on the second letter, O, on the first one, O. And we can actually put nasals on both and put it only, a high tone only on the second one, O. Or we can do all of them with a glottal stop at the end, O. So that's a good way to practice these sounds. Um, I didn't include Ui here because Ui actually isn't affected in the same way as these ones are. It's not as um, um, diverse, I guess, in its pronunciation. All right, so we've got Dnepizad and English. So I'm only going to say the Dnepizad words, and I'm sure you will use the English to reference if you need to. Mose, shush, si, bi, tidi, begashi, all right, you can replay that if you need to, to practice, but those are all the words that we're going to practice right now. All right, so here I've got a sentence for you to practice. I want you to try to pronounce all of the words in the sentence, and afterwards I'll give you the pronunciation. So go ahead and pause the video, and I'll be back. Okay. D B A con y seda con quicker D B A con y seda con. What do you think this means? We've got a literal translation here, one to one translation, which is this deer fire in its sits here. Does that make sense at all? If you only speak English, then it probably doesn't make much sense. So here we've got a more um, accurate translation. This deer is sitting in the fire here. 
Notice how the blues connect and the reds connect, as well as the green, of course. Um, the order is a little bit different, but that will be something we'll come upon in the future. Here is some more information. We've got a determiner, we've got the noun, we've got another noun, we've got postposition, verb, and the adverb. So again, the subject is here and the object is here. It is a silly situation that a, that a deer would be sitting in a fire, but this is coming from my own mind. I just thought it was funny and it reminds me of the meme of the dog sitting in that room that, with a fire. So here's a little picture of that that I made. All right, so these are the consonants we've seen in this lesson. I just want to pronounce them so you'll always have the audio in case you need to reference them in the future. B, ch, ch, d, dl, z, g, r, h, hu, j, k, k, qu, a, o, t, m, m. Yeah. Z, z. All right, same for the vowels. A, 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 All right, so here we've got Nagloshi. It's a good way to practice what we've learned so far, so go ahead and repeat with me or after me, however you want. Is it? Sin se chan so mage shash begashi atsa de be mai ga beso de chash mose tish. So go ahead and repeat that if you need to. You always will have the audio. And here are some more um, animals that aren't really common around the reservation. As you can imagine, a penguin you know, isn't running around the desert. But uh, I found these words online and they seem to, to work. So go ahead and practice them as well. So, so, nashtui, so, no donzigi, vichi, ye adelohi, tsidi, so, nashtui, delvoe, shash, la graiki, tabastin, tsidi, na alk aye, ka logi, tashka tin. All right, so go ahead and practice these words. Again, um, you're going to, with the high tones and low tones, you're going to want to use some kind of um, mechanism to be able to remember those. For example, high, low, low, tse di tso. High, high, low, low, high, nash dui del wo e, nash dui del So go ahead and figure out some kind of way to make it easier for you to um, understand the high tones and low tones. All right, so you've got homework practice. And to be honest, it's not gonna be too hard. All you have to do is ask Dene, the Zod speaker, um, these questions here. You wanna record their answers and comment them below. You can actually write them out in English if you'd like to, or you can write them in the best Navajo that you can. Of course, if you're just starting out learning Navajo, that'll be a little challenging, but I think it's good to challenge yourself and we're all here to learn anyway. So good luck. All right, one reference I tend to use is from a website called gloss.com. It's an English Navajo dictionary online and anyone can use it. It'll give you Navajo words in context, which is something that I value from this website. Um, it won't give you Usually, it won't give you 100% accurate definitions for every single word in Navajo, 
because that is something that really doesn't exist online yet, and hopefully it will at some point. But um, this is a good resource from, from my perspective to be able to see uh, Navajo in context. Otto, yeah, thank you so much for leaving supportive comments in the comment section below. I'll get started on the next lesson and hopefully it'll be out soon. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next one. Yeah.